So do we have any additions or modifications to the agenda? Then would somebody move to approve? To approve the agenda. Great. Seconded. By Commissioner Sigmino, signed by Commissioner Lush. Uh, all those, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes unanimously. And the minutes from August 12th. Somebody folks have had a chance to review those. I move to approve the minutes. Move to approve by Commissioner Sequino. Second. Second by Professor. Um, Commissioner Kabash, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Great. And then I think we're ready to move on to public forum, but also want to say I think this is maybe, and I could be wrong because I missed the August 12th meeting, if I'm not mistaken. But I think that this is the first one where we've got Kevin on. Is that true? So I know you've been on the police commission for a while, but welcome to the joint commission, right? As it's presumably maybe ending, but good to see you. And with that, we move to public forum. And the way that we do this, because it's a committee as opposed to a city council meeting, um, Folks can speak either now or if they have any particular questions or comments on any of the specific items, they can also speak on those items. So happy to do public forum now if any of the attendees are wishing to speak. Uh, I do see one hand raised, Jeff Nick. I'll go ahead and allow you to talk. Great. Great. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, Yes, thanks for putting this meeting on. Uh, I'm the uh, chair of the Church Street Marketplace Commission, and I'm not sure if I should speak now or later, but I'll speak now. Um, you know, I, I think you all know that we continue to deal with many issues on the marketplace. Um, they get worse and worse. The shoplifting is absolutely out of control down here. <clears throat> Merchants reporting daily thefts. Um, it, it's, it's really disconcerting. Um, the open alcohol containers continue to march up and down the street, even in the cold weather. Um, <clears throat> for some reason, we, we can't get our arms around how to um, eliminate that. Um, we clearly need a greater police presence on the marketplace. I mean, <clears throat> when this whole effort started, where everybody was a little timid to say we need the police on the street, I'm not timid at all. Um, we need law enforcement to down here. Ten years ago, we had an officer assigned to downtown and it was great. Um, and everybody knew the officer and everybody wonders, well, why didn't we continue that? Um, it, it makes life feel much safer. Um, and this is not just church trees, it's all downtown. I mean, I think we could all admit that city hall park. If you, if you looked um, around, you would find people drinking constantly all summer long. And it's just, it's just you know, the, the, the word around town or the word around Chittenden County is don't go downtown. Um, it's more and more and more you hear that. So <clears throat> I think I'd really like to see the marketplace involved with your committee. I'm not sure if that's uh, doable the way you're set up, but um, clearly our voice needs to be heard <clears throat> as you figure out uh, how to police in the future. So. With that, I'll sit back and listen. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. I don't see any other hands. Then we will turn to item four, which is the future of the joint committee discussion. Um, and I think that this also specifically involves um, how to move forward with the report that was commissioned by the Joint Committee, which was completed a couple months ago, which is the CNA report. Um, and 
at our last public safety meeting, um, Jane, and Karen, and I had a discussion on how we would like to move that work forward. And I don't know, knowing that we need to do it in line with the police commission, because a lot of the work is revolving around too well, but also not necessarily wanting to use just this forum, especially because if you want to invite any other kind of participants to be part of that conversation, we thought it would get a little bit unwieldy in terms of having people are in the room. So I don't know how many of you know, but the proposal that we came up with was to have this discussion in public safety, but to have two representatives from the police commission join um and then in addition to that to have one representative of the marketplace commission i think you said and then two kind of representatives of local activist groups which we thought we could have one more focused on racial justice such as the vermont racial justice alliance and then one on um focused on mutual aid so food not bombs or one of those organizations and then Potentially, I don't actually remember, and apologies, I'm looking a little bit Karen and Jane. We said maybe also one representative from the fire board. Yes. I don't remember if that was. Yeah, I do think we So that's our proposal for how to move this forward. And we'd be happy to hear thoughts and feedback. The second thing that we already deliberated on, so that's the composition. The second thing we deliberated on was meeting weekly kind of on a semi-weekly basis starting in January. And again, looking at Karen, because I didn't take notes. Karen, can you tell us when? <laughs> Thank you. Sure, sure. Um, well, you've done a you've done a, a good job, great job of laying it out. Um, we um, we decided that we wanted, of course, we wanted to bring this to the the joint committee uh, to all of you police commissioners and see how you felt about it. Um, uh, what we had um, agreed to, the three of us, was to have the meetings to, there are nine um, sections in the CNA report, and to try, although we know it is a, a, a laudable and fairly, maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit of an overwhelming goal, but we had thought of trying to be able to um, accomplish one section at each meeting. Um, trying to keep within the resolution of being able to have an interim report to the council by the end of January and the last meeting of the council in January is on January 31st. So nothing like the last possible day, which is great. Um, and to have go in a linear fashion of sections one, two, three, and four and do those on January 4th, the 11th, the 18th, and the 25th. There are Tuesdays in January. Um, our staff person, who's Jared Pellerin, um, has secured um, a space for us on those days. And as um, as Zaria said, we're hoping to get to police commissioners and certainly have heard um, from Jeff Nick about the desire for the marketplace to be involved and wanted to have um, a marketplace commissioner at those meetings as well as the others that Zariah had mentioned as well. Um, and regarding the administration, because the resolution says that we're working in collaboration as well with the administration, is to have, um, depending on which week we're talking about and which area of the report that we're talking about, would be to have um, you know, an expert from the administration, whether they're with, from BPD or HR or some other area of the city to talk with us and gain input on their perspective on the recommendations in the report. Thank you. I, and, and if Jane, Jane or Zariah, maybe I've, you know, please fill in the blanks of whatever I've left out. No, I think we've talked enough and hopefully we've talked also long enough that folks have had a chance to reflect um, and happy to take any feedback from any of those commissioners. So that sounds really interesting, it really sounds very useful. The one thing I would mention is that the police commission meetings were on Tuesday nights and the fourth Tuesday of the month. And so perhaps for that week, you could uh, have the meeting on a different day.
Well, it's funny, we were, we were hoping to avoid having to do that. Um, and I clearly did not know that you're, um, so in other words, what you're saying is that your last meeting or that your meeting in January is on the 25th? Yes. That's funny, because I think we even looked up when your meetings were and somehow yeah. it just looked kind of biased. So I think either skipping that week or and then continuing on in February or finding another date that week. I mean, if I might just say, I'm going to ask the chair of the commission, but what do you think of if it would be a huge hassle to change the fourth week for, for the the public safety committee that we would change the police commission meeting to Wednesday night that week, something like that. Uh, I'll that. I know I was, I've been doing some discussion about three years. I think mean, we've booked out January yet. So, you know, uh, another thought that we had is what time are right here? Six, 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 six to eight. Well, I guess we were thinking, I don't know if we were thinking of starting at five. Karen, is that true? I think we had compromised, Soraya, and, and um, although we certainly could make it five, I think we compromised and uh, planned on 515. 515, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> to like 715. <laughs> I'm glad I wrote down all of these decision points so that I can report back on them. <laughs> but we're, we are very big. The three of us are very big on finding common ground and compromising, and that was a good example. <laughs> so are we settling on that Wednesday then? The 29th. So you could move it or potentially we could do it at 6 30 and then just close our meeting early. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think we could ask Facebook the next time. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any other thoughts other than that conflict Tuesday? So what so what did, did you decide which one do you think we should change? Oh sorry, were they uh Jabu said that he thinks that they could potentially change the meeting or just make it a little later that night so they will get back to us but it should work out that we have it up to that we keep it on Tuesdays. Okay, great. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Could I ask what, what would be done at these meetings? Like we would discuss the report and then talk about sort of a timeline for implementation of recommendations? What, what would be exactly the focus of the meetings? Yeah, and I can let Karen answer as well, but I think we assume that because we're doing one a week that we would both get to like anything that we thought was missed or have any context for the meeting, which is also part of the purpose of inviting the administration. But then I think getting to like, what is the timeline for one of the recommendation, who's responsible, like for reporting back and so forth. Karen, I don't know if you had a different vision. No, I think that's I think that's true. I mean, you know, and and quite honestly, there may be some recommendations in the report that, for whatever reason, we either feel are not really right sized for Burlington or something that you know, it just may not be a priority for us at the time. And I think that's what the council is looking for us to to discuss and vet these and figure out whether or not they're. Um, there's something that we really do want to move forward with. I mean, the other thing just to mention and not to scare anyone off because we hope, you know, we hope that there will be two commissioners that certainly will want to do this is that it is going to require a, a certain amount of homework, um, you know, reading, really, really reading the information in advance and uh, so that we can come forward with real substantive work on you know, in the two hours that we have, because some of these sections are pretty lengthy. Are you looking for volunteers now? Um, I up to you. I don't know. I feel like I'm looking at Jabu and Shireen on how they want to do it. If they want to, if you want to do this via by email, or if you want to do this now. As long as we don't need to know now, I think as long as folks have decided by, you know, in the next two, three weeks, that works for us. I'm happy to volunteer. We have one volunteer right there. Uh, 
I thought she said. She, I think she said I'm happy to volunteer. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, and I was gonna, you know, Chris and everyone was across to the uh, the January meeting, so I was gonna, I can tie this all together and get back to you in the next couple of days. Great, that'd be great. We don't need to do, we don't need to decide anything this evening. We'll leave that to you. So could I ask a, a detailed question? Apologies if I'm not understanding. So I see 10 sections. It skipped nine. I think they numbered one through 10, but there's no nine, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know. I'm looking at it as actually nine is community engagement and 10 is the implementation roadmap. So I see 10 on page six of the report. Oh, it says there are nine sections, but there are actually 10. So I'm just curious, are you gonna like do two sections a week, something like that? We were planning on doing one section a week. I was under the impression that there were nine. It sounds like we could just meet for an extra week, <laughs> another week. And also if we end up not finishing a section in one week, we might have to have another meeting anyway. So yeah, we had this debate for a little bit, but it seems we still got me got to inconclusive answer. Any other thoughts or questions? And also just want to, we ended on scheduling, but also on composition if folks had any feedback, happy to hear that. And if not, then we can move right along. So Ryan, I was just gonna say it see I wasn't on the committee, but it seems like a similar format to the committee that I know Commissioner Grant was on. And um, I suspect others and apologize, I don't know exactly. And, oh, and um Chair Gamash, and that seemed to work well. Um, but they can correct me if I'm wrong. So I, I it sounds like a, a good plan for getting through it. Oh, you mean the committee on to review policing policies? Right. That's sort of how you um, attacked it, right? Was going topic by topic, meeting by meeting. <sighs> yes, but I would not use that as a guide. I, I personally felt that... <sighs> Long story, anyone who wants to know can reach out to me, but I felt there were things that could have worked better and um, provided more meaningful work. Thank you. Yeah, I, the, I second what Commissioner Grant said. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I actually came up, or I'm a little bit following the model that we, which I realized did not include a police commissioner in retrospect, but the school resource officer task force, which met weekly for quite a few months, I thought was very effective. There was more homework associated with it than I've typically seen on committees, but I think that model worked very well. I think Karen's a great person to chair that kind of was coming along and assign us to do things. So yeah, I'm hoping hoping this will be a productive use of everyone's time. And the last thing that I want to say about this, kind of speaking to the wider future of the joint committee, is that I'm hoping. I feel like one of the things that came out of this that was good was that the city council and the police commission started having more conversations, which I think had been lacking. Because I feel like, and I mean, I think some of this has been self-determined now in the police commission with you before was unclear what your role was. And I just move forward on <laughs> forging, defining, redefining your role um, without us. But I think continue to keep that conversation open will be good. So I'm hoping to some extent that the two, whatever we call those liaisons, volunteers, that that will be more permanent and that even afterwards through this report, they can continue to have that quarterly, whatever it is, meeting with the police commission, um, along with the, somebody from the fire board to have a continued dialogue about collaboration as opposed to just on this report. Great. Then, unless any other questions, I'm going to assume that this will be the last meeting of the joint committee, unless I hear dissent. Great.
Then the only thing that we didn't address that the city council assigned to us was the equitable sharing program, which I know we just had a very difficult time with. And just to summarize where I think we left things off is we got kind of a little bit more of an understanding of equitable sharing and what it is and what it isn't and how that fits into the Vermont context um, from my staff member at the time, Audrey. And we also got some data that Shereen found for us um, in collaboration with the acting police chief and someone else whose name I don't remember what agency they were from. It was with the US Attorney's Office, the federal government. Right. And it seems like since then, this I think the city council also got an update for this year's equitable sharing program that did have a little bit more information in it. And so I guess if this is our last meeting, do we want to have any other discussion on this today? And if it's not, do we want to have another discussion another time? And if it is, do what do I guess what do we want to report back to the city council? Do we have a recommendation? Do we just want to say this is a bigger thing that we're not going to make a decision on? Or folks' thoughts. Go ahead, Shereen. Yeah, my sense is, but I, but I can't say I spent a lot of time with it, but my sense is that the report that the chief submitted this year filled in um, some of the gaps in our of, of information, right, of knowledge that we had, questions about what the cases were. I could be mistaken, and as a city councilor, you'd be in a better position to judge that, but my sense was having more information about the individual cases um, would help individuals. And so maybe the thought is that um, if there is a, an issue with the data that he's providing the cases where it's being applied, then it can be back on the table. I agree with that because I know that I had a lot of questions and it, it just wasn't clear. Like there were some specific cases that were brought up as examples um, and they were, I guess, valid examples for lack of a better word um, to say, well, this is things that we've actually did or we've, we've shared as a result of these cases, but they couldn't eliminate the possibility of certain types of other cases being eliminated where people were not were either found not guilty or in some cases not even charged with the crime which we know at a national level is an ongoing issue where people have to fight to get money back because it was improperly taken I think we are in this moment of reform of policing. And so I think it's important to consider this more uh, in more depth. And um, if I might, I'd just like to share with you uh, an experience that I was involved in with this equitable sharing. And that is, uh, was a case in St. Albans in which the defense attorney called me uh, because uh, her client had been involved in a, a drug case and the uh, St. Albans police had seized $8,000. And so in the plea agreement, um, she proposed, the attorney proposed that that $8,000 be used for training on racial bias. And she called me to ask me, you know, how that might be used. And I called Brandon Del Pozo. And in fact, um, Chief Del, at that time, Chief Del Pozo put together an implicit bias training that included Chittenden County Police. So I think it's an interesting way to think about uh, equitable sharing, about actually having some say about how those funds are actually applied, for example. I am new to this topic, so uh, if I'm incorrect in understanding it, um, you know, feel free to correct me, but uh, assuming that I am clear about what it is, I would just say I think it's important for us to think about and that there are some innovative things we might we might do with, uh, you know, interventions in a program like that. 
those are all excellent points. I think one of the things that we struggled with while we were discussing equitable sharing is that none of us really had one, the information that we needed, which to Shereen's point, I think we got a little bit more with the Chief's last report. And then two, the expertise to propose the alternative because it also seemed, you know, they, folks didn't like the idea of just stepping out of it and this program continuing and us just not getting kind of Burlington share, but then also didn't like um, the potential misaligned incentives, things like that. So I think, I don't know how we feel about maybe just adding, seeing that it's a deeper conversation, adding this to something the police commission looks on later on or that, you know, with this joint body, we want to add that to week 11, um, where we've maybe got time to line somebody up who knows more about it than any of us do. But, so I'll basically say we don't have any findings on this and either public safety or joint, or sorry, or the police commission should take this up in the future. If someone who has with the resources needed to make kind of a informed decision on it. Hi, this is Milo. I um I think I'd like it to to stay with the the new committee formation. Um, we're we're dealing with a lot on the police commission right now, so I don't. I'm curious to hear what the other commissioners think. Thank you. I agree with that with uh, sorry to uh, here. I agree with that with Milo. I know right now we're kind of undertaking a review of a lot of uh, our directives right now as it is and. That's already being pushed back a little bit too. So when I think on our plate, and I think that'd be like big more than we can chew. See how we only meet once a month right now. Great. Karen, I assume is chair of the public safety committee heard that. Interested. My apologies. We have a racial equity training that's starting in about one minute, and I'm trying to get onto that. I apologize. What it what what, what did you say? Oh, the, I think police commission has noted a preference for the public safety committee being the ones to look into this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, do the other two members, are the other two members okay with that? Um, yeah, I think us either doing it potentially as later on after the CNA report or as a week after that, I'm fine with that. Okay, all right, great, yeah, sure, of that, course. There's no deadlines on it. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't have anything else. So unless we missed any members of the public that wanted to speak on any of those topics or if anybody has anything else. So can, can I just ask, is this the last official like drum roll? Is this the last official meeting of the joint committee? Is that a yes? yes? Yes, it is. Okay. So given the fact that that is the case, and I'm assuming that no one is going to object, just want to, although I'm one of the, Jane and I are the two newer members of the joint committee because we came on because of public safety. Um, you know, there are, uh, there are lots of things that are asked of city councilors. Um, usually one of them is not to uh, chair a committee. Their first, uh, a committee of this nature, their first year on the council. Um, but just wanted to acknowledge the amazing work that Zariah and that many of the police commissioners who have been and gone the distance on this have committed to this effort. And um, uh, you all did a great job. Um, thank you all so much. And uh, thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you, Karen. And really, yeah, it's been great to work with the police commission. So I really do hope, I hope that becomes a regular conversation. Thank you all so much for bearing with me through my learning curve. Thanks everyone. So unless there's any dissent, everyone says that I would turn the meeting at 634. Thank you. Great. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye everybody. Take care everybody. Bye.